If you do not have the option of a living donor transplant, you will join the waiting list for a deceased donor. The majority of kidneys transplanted in the United States are from deceased donors. Deceased donor organs are given a KDPI, or Kidney Donor Profile Index Value based on various factors, including the donor's age, height and weight, race and ethnicity, along with information on whether the donor was suffering from hypertension or diabetes, the donor serum creatinine level, whether stroke was the cause of death, whether the donor died due to a heart failure or loss of brain function, whether the donor was a public health services increased risk donor, and the donor's hepatitis C status. I'm not sure I understand. How exactly does the Kidney Donor Profile Index work? The Kidney Donor Profile Index is a numerical measure that summarizes, into a single number, how long a donor kidney should survive post-transplant. Every deceased donor kidney is given a KDPI score ranging from 0 to 100%, where the lower the value, the better the post-transplant survival longevity. As you can see in this chart, living donor kidneys have the highest average post-transplant survival life. However, among deceased donors, a transplanted kidney with a KDPI between 0% and 20% would generally have a higher average functional life than the average post-transplant survival life of deceased donor kidneys with KDPI between 21 and 85% and KDPI greater than 85%. Uh -huh. So, do these categories also determine which type of patient is likely to receive a kidney, of which KDPI value? In a manner of speaking, yes. A deceased donor kidney with KDPI of 0 to 20% is generally allocated to patients with the longest post-transplant survival chances. A kidney with KDPI of 21 to 35% is first allocated to pediatric patients and then to other patients according to the time they've spent on the waiting list. A kidney with KDPI of 36 to 85 percent is allocated according to wait time and a kidney with KDPI of more than 85 percent is allocated to those patients who are willing to accept kidney offers from an older donor with known prior health issue. Oh. Does that mean a deceased donor kidney with KDPI greater than 85% is no good? Not really, no. Let me explain with an example. If you were looking to buy an used Honda Accord and found a model that was manufactured in 2016, you'd assume that the car hadn't been used much and therefore would expect it to ride and handle well for quite a few years, right? However, if you found a Honda Accord model that was manufactured in 2010, you could be sure the car has seen high mileage. You would also be right to assume that the car has some mechanical wear and tear and electrical issues. It would therefore, most likely, not handle well and would most definitely not last as long as the used 2016 model. Mind you, the car would still take you from point A to point B and buying it would definitely be better than walking or taking the bus. But the 2010 model certainly isn't what you would term as ideal condition. A deceased donor kidney with KDPI greater than 85% is somewhat like the 2010 Honda Accord, in not quite ideal condition. Therefore, there is a separate waitlist for recipients who sign a consent form to consider KDPI greater than 85% offers. As you've seen earlier, the kidney survival rate for KDPI greater than 85% is typically lower than kidneys from younger, healthier donors. But if you are over 40, your survival rate after transplant would still be better than what it would be on dialysis. Okay, I get it. Are there any other options for deceased organ donation? An ethically accepted practice of organ donation is known as donation after cardiac death, or DCD. Also known as non-heart beating donation, 
a donor can be declared deceased if the donor's heart has stopped beating, even if the donor is not brain dead. In such a situation, with consent from the family, the donor has to be first removed from life support before the kidneys can be removed. With DCD transplants, there remains a 40% chance of delayed graft function. You may also need dialysis for a short time after your transplant, but the kidneys will recover. Directed donation is another option. If someone dies in a hospital under certain conditions and their family is aware that you are on a kidney transplant list, then they can ask that you be given the kidney. The kidney of the deceased can come from anywhere in the United States. Of course, the deceased donor must be blood and tissue type compatible with you. How would I know whether the kidney I'm being offered is from a donor with increased risk? Excellent question. Firstly, all donors are tested for HIV and hepatitis before you are called with the organ offer. However, some donors may meet the criteria of the public health services as increased risk for sexual behaviors, drug use, travel out of the United States, tattoos and body piercings, imprisonment, or greater than 10 blood transfusions. You will be told if kidneys are coming from donor with increased risk and you will have the right to accept or not accept the offer. Interestingly, one-third of all deceased donors in the U.S. are considered PHS increased risk. Susan is now aware of both types of donors, living and deceased. But what happens when a kidney becomes available from a deceased donor? Continue watching to find out.